day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody. Hey, I'm glad you're back. I hope you enjoyed part A. I didn't do a commentary on that one. Uh, I just wanted to go straight into the fact is that the scripture says that we've all been sent that those who believe in Jesus Christ, accept Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, that you've been sent to go preach the gospel. You start with your home, your, in other words, your personal life. You start with the your environment you're in as far as the city and the state and the country and throughout the world. Uh, they did, I like that one, uh, I can't, I don't know who said, I don't know if Aquila said it or St. Aquila, Augustine, excuse me, uh, said it, uh, but they said, go preach the gospel and if possible, use a few words. And really what they're talking about, the fact is, people really look at our life more than anything else. To, to, to hear what the Spirit is saying, they're saying is how well are you being led by the Spirit of God, you know? Uh, so we've been sent, and with being sent, that's mean instructions given, not just by the Word of God, but by the Holy Spirit that, that leads us and guides us concerning who to witness to, when to witness, uh, how to be an effective witness. Uh, so but we want to learn to hear from God. Uh, and one of the scriptures I use, uh, we use uh, for that Bible study we had on the 19th, of April, it says in Revelation 2 7, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 2 11. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches, He that overcometh shall not be hurt to second death. Revelation 2.17 He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save as he that receiveth it. To me, that talks about that personal relationship God is having, of having a personal name that's for you, you know? Like, my name is Kenneth, but people call me Kenny. That, that means there's some, that's more of a more endearing term uh, as far as a name. In other words, it's, it's, it's a special name. It's a name somebody has more familiarity about, a person, you know? Uh, and that same thing you, some of got nicknames, some of just, like one of my friends, he just says, uh, call him by his name. <laughs> he don't like nicknames, and some of you probably don't like him either. But that, that's, that's the point is that people who feel comfortable calling you by a nickname, they normally do that with the understanding that uh, they have a personal, intimate type relationship with you. Uh, and that's why they call you by your nickname. Or endearing name, you know, all the like what your mama call you, amen. <laughs> and also, just a Revelation 2 29, Revelation 3 6, Revelation 3 13, Revelation 22, all keep saying the same thing. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And what I'm saying is, God is constantly through the Holy Spirit communicating to us, and our job is to be able to. to he learned and practiced listening to the lead of the Holy Spirit, the unctions that He gives us. And, and understand that not only God is talking to us, I, I, I think the better way to communicate it is there's many other things that try to go into our ear gate, what we hear, you know, our eye gate, what we see, our mouth gate, what comes out of our mouth. <laughs> uh, and all those type of things try to uh, move us and direct us and making decisions uh, that if we don't be careful, 
going outside of the will of God could lead to things that we really don't want to run into. And I think all of us run in a situation where we do run into some things that we wish I, I should have took the took left instead of right. I should have said this instead of that. I, 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 you know, we, we know that sometimes we make decisions that put us on a path that we really not appreciate about. So let's learn and practice to hear from God. When you pray, God's not looking for a long prayer and, 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 and a lot of words. He's really looking for you to communicate with Him and allow Him to, to, to communicate with you. And the Bible said pray without ceasing, and that means that communication, because prayer is really a form of communication, two-way communication between you and God. And pray without ceasing means stay tuned to that channel. Stay tuned to the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit. He's talking to us. And we need to just practice learning to listen so that we can focus on His direction. And, and, and keep in mind, we're not talking about people about being so spiritual deep or, or somebody sort of being so religious that they know, they, or spiritual and not earthly good, because we operate in this world. And we, there's, there's more than just the Holy Spirit that's trying to talk to us. Some of people are talking because they need you to hear, because you're interacting with people. But the question is, just, just try to filter out the noise as much as possible so that one channel that you always want to try to keep open is leading the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, I, I want you to put in that, in fact, is learn to hear from God, trust in God with all your heart and all your soul. For me, too, I'm not talking. Everything I say, I want you to know, it's not just for you and that I have arrived. No, it's for me, too, to learn to hear from God. Because, like I said, there's a lot of things that's competing to what God is saying to us. So we want to hear. And I, I want to pass on something that God was leading me to. One of the things that said, the Bible said we walk by faith, not by sight. So even by hearing from God, I want to hear it by faith, right? And, and then the other piece is the fact is to trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Trusting in His leading and guidance by faith. And recognizing this, I was, what came to my mind was a lot of cases we'll sit there and make this choice of, of being able to, to God said, cushion ourselves uh, for the possibilities of the negatives. And, and when we do that, sometimes we don't do certain, we don't take certain actions because we we, we, we dreading the possibility of failure or ridicule, whatever. But the I, God was telling me today, he was saying this, I just need you to have faith in me and recognize who I am. See, he is God Almighty. And with God, the scripture said, all things are possible with God. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Here's a point I want to bring out. He's saying to me, you are not the Almighty, which is a given fact. Maybe that's one of us. You, there's not, all things not possible with you or with me. That's a given. And not all things are possible with other people. That should be a given. So it's better to sit ourselves and put our trust in the God of all things possible. And, and understand this. Put not trust in God. He will catch us. He will sustain us. He will, regardless of what comes our way, so we dwell in the presence of Him, He will be the, the cushion of anything that comes our way. But if we allow ourselves, I'm just saying, is you really, you since all things are possible, your cushion is weak. What do you mean cushion? Well, you know, like I said, if you, if you, like I said, somebody run against a wall, they, woo, you know, they got to sit there and brace themselves. Somebody gets slapped, woo, you know, a boxer, right? He got to, he got to put his fists up and try to keep from getting hit, right? And just if he does get hit, he's going to have to absorb that impact. 
Well, in life, our cushions are not sufficient because it doesn't always work. And to embrace or cushion yourself for failure is, is, is really hindering your abundance of life. You need to go and just, we just, we, I, need to just go and press forward by faith. Faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Embrace the evidence of things not seen. Live in the peace and harmony of the things not seen with expectation. And anything that comes our way, recognize I'm not dealing with it alone. If, if the pestilence hits you, you're not alone. There's people, I mean, check it out. This 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 this, this, this fat person that's going on right now. This is a, this is uh April the 25th. The pestilence is happening right now where people are in hospitals and, and fighting for their life and and and, and over fifty thousand, at least here in this country, have died and have died alone physically. I mean their loved ones. Something we expect to be by our bedside, so don't die alone. And then you die with, and God bless and thank you for a nurse or a, or a doctor or a staff to be there with you. Uh, and then I like technology. Some people get there, they can hear uh, by phone or, or video being able to let the person know, we're here, we're here with you. And that's a blessing too, eh, to be able to be either on the phone or something like that, and, and they can know you're there. They know you're there. But a lot of cases, some of the people died and they, they, the people couldn't be there. That was an expectation. We always at least want to sit there and say, I have people that love me and that I won't be alone. But because of this situation, those people who truly love someone, because they're not in the all possible, they can't be there. But trusting by faith that God is there, that the Holy Spirit is there, that which is greater than anything that's in the world is there, never leave you nor forsake you. He said, that's why I want you to learn and understand. Don't worry about this. Don't cushion yourself or brace yourself for failure. Brace yourself for success. Because I'm there with you. He said he'd overcome it. So you're an overcomer through him. He will get you there. He will get me there. We just trust in him and, and cast that care to him. And yes, I know it's not easy. But I always know this too. It's not easy when you're carrying your burdens. And it's also not realistic to think you can fix it. So I focus on the failure or the possibility of failure. Focus on the success and faith in God who is almighty, who all, where all things are possible. That's, that's what he was telling me, so I hope that's for somebody to listen to that. All things are possible with God. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. You are an overcomer through him, through Christ Jesus. Amen? All right, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time for part C. And it looks like it will be a part D, but hallelujah anyhow. All right, thank you for listening. God bless. Bye-bye. Trust, remember you saw me last week and said, oh, if you're going to trust on that, then, then, then I'm going to yeah. shut it down. I'm, I, otherwise, I'm going to let you understand there's a consequences and when you put something else above me. It, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not him that's killing us. It's sin. Yeah. It's just us turning away from us. It's, it, it's him, us turning away from him that prompted the action. It's like, okay, you don't want me in? I'm out. I'm out. Now handle it. <laughs> you fix it. Yeah. And the people that were put in place that should have been fixing it failed. Mm. They literally failed to, to, to they opened the bike up and let the enemy in. They, they they took the Trojan horse. Yeah. And brought it in the camp. And now it's killing everybody. It, it's it, Lord help me. I, this is this for me is really not a good point. I need to hush. What we had to edit the whole thing. Where we help at? Where you at? <laughs> well, I, I, I do, I do think, like you said, the fact is, where is you putting your trust in? You know, if if you, yeah, okay. if you you gonna sit there and go against God's servant, if you are gonna sit there and not uh, look for God for your help, 
Well, what did one scripture say? I look to the hill from where my help comes from, right? Amen. I, I got to look yeah. to the Lord, and, and, and that's what we're talking about last week is, especially now for the body of Christ to rise and shine, is to look up. Look up for where our answer is coming from. Yeah. Right? Yeah, coming from the Lord. Yeah. Yes. We we have to we just have to make sure that's always remembered. So what else we got here, brother Isaac? What else going on? It says <clears throat> verse eleven. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us. And we have done foolishly. And wherein we have sinned. Yes. Let her not be as one dead, Come on. of whom the flesh is half consumed when he cometh out of his mother's womb. Uh -huh. God, my death. That's fine. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God. Come on now. I beseech thee. Come on. <laughs> one second. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Uh uh. <laughs> if her father had but spit in Woo. her face, uh -huh. what? <laughs> did she not be ashamed Come on. seven days? <laughs> Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. Woo! Oh, you gon' you gonna learn today. <laughs> you gonna learn today. That, that, that there's some consequences for 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 you for you going against me like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, help, that, me Lord. help us, help us, Lord, help us. Come on now. And, that that what he said. After that after that let her let her be revived uh -huh. again come on again. uh huh and Miriam was shut out from the camp yes, seven sir. days seven days the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again yes sir and afterward the people removed from Nazareth and pitched in wilderness of Paris yes sir in other words they they the all stayed and waited for her. But the bottom line is, there's some consequences. Yeah. And and and, and most Aaron, Mary, what? I guess Miriam must did more smack talking, uh, Chris. I don't know why. Because Aaron, Aaron I, I know one thing. Aaron was afraid. <laughs> I bet you. I bet you, Aaron, if he could find a mirror, he said, "Lord, no." <laughs> yeah, looking at himself. Huh? <laughs> hey, do I look like? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess Mary, Mary said that to him, so he must look okay, but I bet he was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, but that, that's the thing about the gospel, man. You got to understand. Now, Brother Jackson, you, 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 it's time for you to tell us some words here. I got to hear on you, De Deuteronomy. And, and, and we want to okay, hear from me, you. Me. Deuteronomy 13. Roger that. Here we go. If there arise among you a prophet, uh -huh. or a dreamer of dreams, and give it thee a sign or a wonder. Now, now just make sure we're slow down. I'm going to interrupt you a time, but you know where I'm coming from. The bottom line is, Chris, that's similar to what God just said to Mirren and uh, Aaron, didn't he? If, there, if there's a prophet among you, this I'm going to uh -huh. talk to you. Yeah. Vision and dreams. All right, go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. Okay, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. And the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known. Come on now. And let us. Go ahead. Okay. And thou shalt hearken unto the words of that prophet. Go ahead. Or of that dream of dreams. Uh huh. For the Lord your God proved thee to know whether he loved the Lord your God with all of your heart. Go ahead, go ahead. Say something, bro. Say it, you know, now you, you hear the words. Yes, sir. And and, 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 and you I'm gonna know whether or not you are about me. Come hey, on. Come on now. And hey, you, come on. Because <laughs> With all your heart, with all your soul. And then verse four he says, Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. <laughs> and and obey his voice. Yes, sir. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Hold on to him tight. Yes, sir. Now slow down for a second here. The, the point is uh, okay. that, that brother, brother Addison, we did see here that there are some people that are going to have visions and dreams. You know, there's going to be some people that say, Elder, I, 
I've just says the Lord, and 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 I want to share that with you, right? I mean, there's obviously going to be some people that are going to do that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, but but what he said is here's the key to what I need y'all to be able to do. If they're leading you away from me, if they, if if I want you to be if if you just just for yourself as well as anybody else. If you get a vision or a dream that pulls you away from the Lord, that talk, put you in another direction, that depend on something other than Him, you need to know how you got to bring that under subjection, right? Right. If you get somebody that comes with a dream and a vision, acting like a prophet, and they tell you something that you know don't line up with God's word. He's saying you need to put that person away from the midst of you because you have learned to trust in me. Isn't that right, Elder? Yeah, amen. That, I mean, that's what God is wanting to say. You have to hear from God. My point is, you have to hear from God yourself because there's going to be people out there with the expectation of trying to tell you, I heard from the Lord. I, 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 I want you to show up in my place. Huh? Or, 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 uh, yes, sir. I want you to go by a political affiliation opposed to the leading of the Lord as to how the Lord wants you, like you said, a paradigm shift. Look to me. Amen. Don't look to somebody else. Look to me. And I think that's what he's trying Amen. to say. But I'm just letting you know this kind of thing. I mean, Elder was. There are people that are going to say they got signs and wonders. Yes. That they want to yes. use and say you got you got to follow me because Chris, I got it going on. That's what they're going. You know what I mean? They, and some of them act like they do got it on going on. Mm -hmm. But anytime it steers you away from serving the Lord, I think that's where we run into the problem. No, I don't think that. I'm telling you, that is where the problem comes from. Amen. God speaks to Amen. you. God speaks to Chris and vision of dreams. And I know y'all have some dreams. I don't care what y'all can sit there and tell me you have it, but I know you have some dreams. That you had you had to Amen. get up and think about it. Sir, <laughs> you, yes, sir. Come on now. And, and you need to be able to say, is that dream lining up with God's word and God's will? Because if it ain't lined up with God's word, if it ain't lined up with his will, then you got to sit there and say, oh, I got to put this in this proper, proper space. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, Brother Jackson, you got four. You read four? Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. Uh-huh. And keep his... Come on now. And obey his voice. Come on. And ye shall serve him. Come on. And cleave unto him. Come on. Now, again, it says there, you know, walking after God and fearing him and having that respect and staying close and tight. And then in verse 5, it says, and that prophet. And that prophet. <laughs> or that dreamer of dreams. That dreamer of dreams. And here it comes. Uh-oh. Shall be put to uh -oh. <laughs> because, because he has spoken to turn away, turn away from the Lord your God. Come on now. Amen. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Uh huh. And we came out of the house of bondage. Come on. The, so the bondage the of sin. Come on. Come on. Yeah, to run thee out of uh -huh. the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee. Come on. <laughs> so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Woo. Come on. <laughs> All right. Come on, brother. Now finish that. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. So, so first, before you move on, the bottom line is, look, Chris, I think he's talking to you right there. He said, look, look, I brought you. I brought you out of sin. I brought you out of sin. I, and if you don't understand that, I need you to understand it now. I brought you out of sin. I brought you. I delivered you. And if you sit there and follow somebody or get somebody to try to get you to turn back, then I need you to Put them out of the mist. See, look, we in that look, bread eyes. We in that dispensation. See, we ain't gonna kill them. <laughs> we ain't gonna kill them, but but we gonna have to sit there and say, man, I gotta let you go. I, 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 you, you, if you're trying to pull me away from that paradigm shift 
that Chris is talking about, which is a personal relationship from God. And the right elder. There's a personal relationship that you're supposed to have with God yourself. You need to be able to hear from God. And I'm saying this for the people listen, we got we got look like we got a little live stream here. Let me go. One, two, three. It doesn't matter whether the rest of the group is gonna follow. I'm mm -hmm. just gotta be able to say that ain't lining up with with the understanding of the word of God. You said obey the law of the land. You said there's a virus out there that's killing people. What I'm gonna think I think I'm gonna stay home. Cause I haven't heard from I haven't heard from, I have not heard from God to tell me to go. All right? Right. So in other words, when when somebody trying to I'm sorry, go ahead, what do you say? Well there is a real kind of conversation that, that, that takes place between us and God. Yes. And we should we have we should have the expectation. There is real time. It's like, okay, this is the circumstance, this is the situation, what are you saying? Not what you said. We know it's in the scriptures, we read the scriptures, but a lot of times that particular word does not pertain to us specifically. Yes. But what we have is we have a personal a relationship with a living God. It ain't like Jesus did. But like God is in a grave somewhere, we gotta figure him out. Come on. One of the benefits is that, that the thing that happened at Eden, I mean, not Eden, but in the garden, but at Gethsemane was the Lord God, Jesus sacrificed, restored, the communication process. Yes. We can literally talk to a living God who is our Father who will give us real time responses. Yes. Lord, what do you want me to do? And He'll talk to you through the scriptures because I remember when this thing set off, I saw the Ten Commandments. I saw the movie, right? Uh -huh. When you put the blood on the post and say, This is the Passover. I hadn't even thought about the fact that we were in the season of Passover. Yes, sir. But that's <laughs> what I saw. I saw that. And then later, you know, because I'm been in the past one that would front, you know, the situation where God got us. But in this situation, it was like, he said, you need to go in the house. And he, and he took me to the scripture where it says, where the devil tempted Jesus to jump down from the pinnacle. Right. And Jesus said, thou should not tempt the Lord thy God. Even though he used the scripture, the scripture said, yeah, you know, you're bad, you're at least you dash your foot against the stone. And I've been reciting that thing for 28 years. This time it did not apply to that situation. Come on now. It was, it was, me, it was to go inside and sit down. Yeah. And I can understand y'all, that's where I've been for the last three months. I've been, uh -huh. I've been avoiding <laughs> the, the, the social contact. I've been avoiding the assemblies. I've been avoiding everything because the word that I got from him uh -huh. was go inside. Go inside. Come inside. Sit down. This is this ain't your, this, you know, you need to sit this one out. You, this ain't for you. Right. So, not out of fear. But out of faith. Out of faith. Being mm -hmm. led by yeah, Christ. Don't keep going with it. <laughs> exactly. My faith told me to go in the house and, and shut up and sit down. You know? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the whole prayer yeah. shift is, to be able to hear from God yourself. You know, if you're Amen. in agreement, if I'm in agreement with what you're saying, God is telling you, that's okay. It's just when it's not in agreement, I need to be able to sit there and say, well, God bless you. I heard what God told you to do. You go do what God tell you to do. And, and, amen, and but I know He didn't tell you to include me because I I ain't hear from Him. Yep, that's the that's paradise right. ship. <laughs> I haven't heard from Him. You know, there's people got married to people because they said somebody said the Lord told you to marry so and so. Mm -hmm. Huh? And he said, wait a minute, God is saying, look, the whole purpose of ministry, I said over and over again, is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. The main work is to hear from God yourself. Praise him. Amen. To you. hear from God yourself. Chris, go ahead, Chris. What you got there on the second uh, Corinthians? Okay, second Corinthians. <laughs> chapter, verse three. But though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Come on, brother. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal. Yes, sir. We're mighty through God. Woo! -hoo. Pulling down of strongholds. Yes, sir. Down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Come on now. And bring it into captivity. Every thought oh. of the obedience of Christ. <laughs> hey, did y'all get that? Oh, you, you can finish reading that, that last one. What is that? 
and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And when your Amen. obedience is fulfilled, <laughs> meaning God is saying, what did I tell you? <laughs> when you line up with me, now I can, you can go ahead and, and do the rebuking, Brother Jackson, after you don't line up with what you have heard from God. But but you right. notice that thoughts are images, aren't they? You, you, you don't thought you don't thought words. You 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 see visions, and that's what he's saying. Every thought, which means every vision, that 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 goes up against the knowledge of God. You, paradise shift. You, individual members of the body of Christ. You supposed to bring those thoughts into captivity and make sure they line up with the knowledge of God Almighty. You need to do that. And that's why you're trying to show people. People have ran away from the church because they got offended by what somebody else said opposed to what God said. God is talking to the body of Christ. Amen? So just keep that, keep that in mind. So what we got...